hello and welcome back to this museum where today well today's a sad day for me and i guess for you as well yeah it's a sad day but it might also be a happy day but it starts sad because today well we say goodbye to our team msrt transit already. sorry transit transit already already it feels like it's just arrived and already well, it's it's now going to be departing. We've loved living with this for a little while, but this needs to head back to the guys at MSRT. But fear not. But fear not, because the reason this is heading back to the guys at MSRT is we actually had a bit of an issue with insurance and basically we're unable to tow with this van, which obviously we'd love to be able to do. So the guys at MSRT have said, well, we have a blue one that you can use and you can tow with this because this one's actually under a different insurance company. So here you are. Welcome to our new Ford Transit MSRT in blue. <laughs> this is so random, but so, so cool. <laughs> We've gone from lemon fire to traffic blue. To traffic blue. Yes, it's, um, it's very shmi, isn't it? Yeah, we'll run through the sort of spec of it. Let's call it the spec. Yeah. A little bit later so on. This one's clearly um, got the sticker pack, but there's some green going on. Yeah. And there's, we'll, there's we'll, a couple we'll run of through what we've had that's different, and the whole van's very slightly different. It is. Um, it's a bit different in every way, really. So I think it's actually, as, as much as it's exactly the same, it is a little bit different. I think it's going to be quite fun getting to know this one as well. Yeah, we also have a toy to we do. briefly show, and then we'll go into more detail again a little bit later on. We do. Video. So we had a visit from a chap called Tom at Folger's Tool Store, who, well, he's come and dropped us a little something, which is <clears throat> the Makita Robotic Vacuum Cleaner. Now, well, this is just awesome, right? Well, this basically means that you found a way out of working and having to like clean up this museum because you can press go on this and just let it do the whole place, right? Yeah, why, why do I need to get a, a, a dustpan and brush out when I can just send this on its way and it, and it cracks on? But it's not just as simple as that. This one is super, super smart. You can essentially have it map the whole room yes. and work in certain areas. You can go on the app and track it. You can pop boxes where you don't want it to clean. If you wanted to not do a certain area in the middle of the room, you could do that if you wanted to put it so it didn't clean a car. You might because... be confusing people getting a bit ahead of yourself at the moment. Maybe, maybe not. But it, may, it will make sense later it on. It will make sense it. later on because, I mean, there are a couple of models of this. This is actually the DRC 300. So it's the more advanced model, which has the parking sensors, I'm going to call them, around the front. Yeah. It has the camera and it has the LiDAR sensor, which, as Brad says, means what, when you first use this, it will just drive around the room, no hoovering, no vacuuming, and just learn the room. And it creates a very detailed image on your phone that it then knows what the room is, how big it is, and what it needs to do. And as Brad said, you can then map out certain areas where you don't want it to go. For example, we've mapped out where we park cars so it doesn't crash into those. Yeah. So we'll show you more of that later, which we only did, actually did a few days ago when this arrived because, well, I think we were so eager to start playing with it, which is ridiculous, isn't it? All of this stuff yeah. we have in here and we wanted to play with a vacuum. It was cool and it was good fun. It was. But anyway, I guess for now, we need to figure out what else we have coming up today and then shortly maybe take this out for a, a spin and go through the specs and... Yeah, I mean, it, it's blue. We have to see what this one's like because it's blue. So it's going to drive yeah. slightly differently, blue right? Blue and green are different. Yeah, it's going to drive differently, of course. Yeah, it's blue. So it's time to talk about our Makita DRC 300 vacuum cleaner. Now, as I said, the other day this arrived and me and Brad were so keen to start playing with it, we literally did just that so we've mapped out the entire room which brad's going to show you some overlays we'll put some footage in now i think of, okay well in a second we'll put some footage in of what we actually did in the process and how it all yep. works but we just want to point out we put some wood timber planks yeah we have the timber that we in, have for our mezzanine build so yeah, we, we, we use put that. them in front of the cars um literally just to stop the cars from getting hit yeah it has no effect on the mapping it still could see behind the lifts, it could still see behind the cars and around the cars just because of how clever the sensors are. Although if we're going to be completely honest, at least myself, I didn't realise that and I honestly thought it would draw the map 
the edge of the map where it stopped, yeah. but it, it can see everything. The wood was basically too small. If we were to have maybe yeah. our flooring samples Possibly. up here, maybe that would have stopped it, but... Yeah, because the LiDAR so... can see over. I mean, it can even see the gap, the walkway, if you like, behind the lift. So it's very clever and very advanced. But anyway, we had the timber out placed in front of the car, so it couldn't hit or damage anything, did the mapping, and well, take a look at that now. So we're going to create a new map. It says the robot will draw the area's map. Please wait until the robot completes, completes mapping and starts to return to home. Uh, you can store up to five maps and that is based on a 10,000 meter squared area, which is Square big. meter. Meter squared. Meter squared, square meter. Square meter. Same okay, thing. same, same thing. thing. For greater accuracy, remove obstacles before mapping. Well, unfortunately- We've blocked them in. We've blocked them in. So the obstacles are removed. Yep. So I can hit okay on this. Uh, we'll select the area number. Next, we're going to call it Schmuseum. Dutch Museum. Yeah, we'll call it Dutch Museum. Okay. Yeah. Dutch Museum. No, I can't type anymore. I've got eight characters, so I can literally call it Museum. So just, that's perfect. Just, should we go with. Sh oh, okay, perfect. And I've now hit go. So we need to go out of the way of the map because the sensors will see us. Yep. And I guess we literally can wait. Oh, there we go. That was bad camera work. Yeah, we can now just. I'm hiding on a lift. <laughs> And so that, that is now mapping. And the cool thing is you're about to see on screen, I have just pressed the mapping icon. I'm gonna sneak behind it and come and join you from over here. Yeah, and I now have a full map of what we're mapping out. So you'll see on screen, it's got an area in front of it, obviously, which is what it's now drawing. Okay. But it's starting to figure out the layout of what's going on. Wow. So it will pick up everything. It'll pick up the walls in here. It will pick up anything that could be an obstacle. But obviously we're having it set so that it will not go past. And then once we have the mapping done, we can go onto the app, onto the map, and put these uh, squares around the edge. So we'll just tr basically track our lines with these squares and that's where it will not go and clean. So 100% it will stop and be good to go, which is nuts. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching that mapping process as much as we had fun doing it. I know it's really childish and silly, right? But it's really weird. It is, it's, it's oddly satisfying. But I guess now we want to get our new transit MSRT out. Yes. The old one out. And then we can actually set the Makita up to start cleaning the floor space. Yes, we can. And you've set the map up on it accordingly. So it shouldn't hit any of the cars. However, I can't remember what we've shown in the previous clip from a couple of days ago, but Tim has been and had a look at this and he has said he doesn't mind if it does bump a car because crucially these, these areas here are actually designed with a bit of spring and a bit of movement. So there is some give if it did hit anything. So it's not immediately going to damage a carbon fiber splitter or something. Yeah, it so will don't worry. be okay. Tim has approved that this can be set off if something didn't work with our mapping. Yeah. It can hit a car and he's okay with it. So yes. And if it does hit a car, we'll make sure we film it because we've got to show everything. Clickbait, right? right? We can yeah, clickbait like that. that. We, we crashed one of Tim's cars. Something like that. Sort of. Cool. Well, I guess we want to jump into this and this pull them outside and then get clean. Do we put this on a tripod and start both of them with the Max Austs on and have the craziest V8 no. van rumble rev off? No. no. Let's just move them outside. A few minutes later. There you go. Both vans are now outside the museum. And in fact, our lemon fire one, well, it's gone, right? Yeah, we have one outside the museum and it is traffic blue. Sad times, but happy times because we've lost a van, we've got a van, all is well. And we're going to take you out and show you a little bit around that in a, in a while, because we, we almost got to spec it. Yeah, we, there was a few things that we got to choose what was added, changed, etc. Yeah, from the lemon fire that we had. So, so we will run through we'll that with through you that. shortly. But now, this. obviously, the reason we are here is to go through the cleaning process of our Makita DRC 300. So obviously, you've seen the mapping process. That's all done. It's in its home place, as you would have seen. Yep. This is where it lives. I've just realized what we've done very wrong here. Just need to go and get some batteries. Be, give me a moment. Right, take two. We have some batteries now. Now this will run off of just one battery or you can pop two on. And then from what we've gathered, it will kill off one and then move on to the next yep. one. So it so. won't sort of stop halfway through. And no. then you can come over, pause it, take another one off. So, so back to where you were. Now batteries are in. Come and press and hold the on button. And there we go, that turns on, that loads. Now what that's doing is just loading its settings and the maps that it has saved within it. So we keep waiting. Yep, doesn't take very long to be honest. There we are, we're all good, set up now. 
So as you can see, that's currently on F because that's uh, for free cleaning. So it will just run around and do, do anything, do yeah. what it wants to. But if we pop that onto map number one, yep. which is the one we have set as the museum, as this you here would have seen. This here obviously is our Wi-Fi button, which means you can then connect the phone up, but we don't need to. No. So all we have to do now, in theory, we just press that once. <laughs> Off it goes. Off it, it goes. Does a quick 360, just to get its bearings, make sure it knows where it is and what's around it. And then, it goes. Moment now, of truth. You did some fine tuning to the mapping off camera. I did. And the non clean areas, the prohibited yeah. areas. So, fingers crossed, it doesn't hit any cars. In fairness, I only did around the 4 GT because, because you have to add square boxes and you can't put circles or shapes. We, we were quite a way out from the 4 GT. Look. So, it was Look, just a case there. of doing more smaller boxes to kind of stagger it, if you like, and get the, get the line roughly where we'd want it. Now but yeah, it's, you it's, wait and you watch and play. It's on its way. I mean, the, the, the funniest thing, you say that, but the beauty of it is obviously, and I know what you're saying with that, but you don't wait, you don't watch, you don't, you just set it, you just forget it, in and theory. Annoyingly, we do watch because any, we need test, to, any testing we've done, it's been quite fun just watching it and seeing where it's been going. And, and in fairness, this genuinely is the first time we've let it loose without the wooden barriers, which you would have seen us yeah. use to do the mapping. So. This is where we first discover, oh, have yeah. we done it right? Because or is when, it going to hit a car? When we did last test, we had wood in front of the SF90. We did. So this will go all the way to the end and it should then loop back on itself. It should. the area that it knows. It should, However, but will it? If it gets to the barrier and for some reason doesn't think there's the barrier, then maybe we're going to hit I'm SF90. not going to step in front of it because the camera and the parking sensors will, <gasps> but I'm, look at that. It's found its wall and it's gone yet. Yeah, I can't go there. Let me turn around. Let's clean that way. There you go. And off it goes back the other direction. So I'm assuming from what I'm seeing is it's just gonna run in lines. Pretty much. That's what it seems like, yeah. And off it goes and any little bits of dirt, dust or whatever that is here from moving the vans in and out or whatever, gets clean. Have we got something we can throw in front of it to demonstrate? Maybe we can find some dirt I'll, outside. I'll, find, I'll try and find something. Find some dirt. Okay, so I've been and done some sweeping from where this hasn't yet visited. So if we... Oh, nice. It's a little line of that. dirt for it to... <laughs> oh, here we go. Well, it, it decided to avoid the dirt. It, However, it, does it. it has picked up most of it. So yeah. if, I, if I grab the little bit it did avoid... It will come back and get this as well, luckily. Well, it will do it right now as well. But it was cool. So seeing it's like brushes on the outside went, yep, cool. It's so I think it's it. seeing me do that. Yeah, you're putting something in front of it and it's going, help, something's in the way. Oh, look, it's going back on its line. So is it, is, if I do that again, will it? Yeah. Okay, now it's done a full, like I'm going away from here. I've confused it. I've broken it. That's no, okay, it's going, yep, cool. This is where I want to be going. Yep, we'll no, go it's, that way. Go, it's going off on a complete different, oh wait, no, there we go. Look, the little brushes are picking up the little stones there. Yep. And there you are, it's line? back on its line again. Nice. Okay. Here we go, all connected on the app, and you can see straight away, it says number one museum, so that is area number one. And we have cleaned 32 square meters and have done 13% of the barn so far in the last five minutes, which is pretty cool. Yeah, not bad at all. Well, I guess we should probably leave this alone. Maybe we'll keep an eye on it for a little bit longer, but we'll leave this alone to go and do what it needs to do. And I say, let's go and jump in our new transit and go for a drive. Can I show one more feature? Go on. Come over here. Okay. I don't, I don't know what you're going to show. On the app, um, you're not going to see this, but there's something quite fun we can do with this, which is this button. Why would you do that? Smash. You can make it play music. Apparently it didn't like the old school brush. And, uh, just barged yeah. it out of the way, unlike avoiding things like it normally does. So what would it, what would it do if I just stand in front of it Because we've set it up to go home now. Will it try and barge me out the way? Yeah. Let's just move, you're in my way. There we go, he's going around. It's trying to go around, but you're in its way. It's just figuring out like how wide your feet are. Apparently so. There we go, oh, oh, oh. Almost. Is it gonna... Almost. Oh look, wide berth. 
And off it goes with some wet feet from the water on the floor. Yeah, we probably shouldn't let it go well, through too going, much water, but... <laughs> it's going right around behind. I love the fact well, that it's cool. found its line again. So for you, it went, yeah, we can't get round. For the old school dust pan and brush, it went, I'm better than you. I'm going to go straight through it. Literally. Right, you guys are now taking a ride <laughs> on the Hoover. Because if I come over here, you'll see that I don't have a camera in my hand and neither does Tom. <laughs> the museum goes for a ride on the Schmakita. I feel like this would be a great time lapse. Literally, come back, we'll go out with the van, come back, just set this off and then time lapse the whole... <laughs> He's going to turn around and see us. Here we are, our new MSRT Transit Custom in... Remind me of the colour, Brad, I can't remember. Traffic blue. Traffic blue. I'm so used to lemon fire. I know. That I do kind of miss it, but I feel like this will grow on us because it is a really, really nice blue. It's like... It is. It's not got too much like craziness to it, but it's just a nice colour. And I feel like it's quite a shmi colour, if we're yeah. being completely honest. It fits in very well with the rest of the, of the collection. Yes. Now, I guess we need to run through things that were specced by us, let's put it that way. Yeah, so obviously, as we mentioned earlier on, unfortunately, there was an issue with insurance on the Lemon Fire van, so we switched into this one. Now, we didn't have a choice on the colour that was fixed for us yeah. in terms of what was available from Ford's fleet. However... We did have the ability, as Brad said, to spec a few bits. So if we start with what we already know and love, the 20 inch OZ Racing alloy wheels. Yep, so I believe this did have the 18s on originally. Had the 18s are standard. The, the standard sort of option with the MSRTs, but we went for the upgraded 20 inch. We did indeed. If we keep coming a little bit further around the back, you will also see we've opted for the black tailpipes, which yep. again, a standard would be chrome, which does match the lemon fire van. And the first big difference. This one is quite different because we don't have a hatchback door. We have actual, I believe they call them barn doors. Um, oh, and actually there's something in there, which we will show later. when but we get back to the museum. We have something here. That's what the biggest clue you're going to get for that for now. But yes. Yeah, we have barn doors, which is cool. And what you may or may not be able to tell if you've had, it depends on how much we showed in the back of the last one. This is actually a long wheelbase yeah, band as well. Yeah, we can show well. that from the side. Yeah, so this one's actually an extra 60 centimetres longer than the it's Lemon Fire pretty van. Pretty much, is like from here to here. Extra, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think if you was to look at the Lemon Fire van, it kind of ended about there. So all of this is extra, which doesn't sound like a huge amount, but it does enable you to carry quite a bit more. And I think the most striking thing about the van, which we have left, is the decal pack. Now, this wasn't here. A few days ago yep. and it's now been put on for us and we've gone with green for a couple of reasons really the first one i think this is as close as we could get to the lemon fire of our original van so yep. this is effectively a tribute to the first van and where it all started and secondly because contrasting colors is again a very shmi thing to do pink and yellow sto purple yep. and green on the zenvo yeah so we've gone for blue and green on the transit and it's quite funny i was speaking to the chap at msrt oh. and he said when i requested green yes you do get this it around cool. the front as well yeah he said when i requested the green decals he was sitting there thinking i don't think this is going to look good but once it was done i think we all agree it does actually it work quite well it works but other than that this is practically the same man, just long wheelbase with the barn doors on the back instead of the hatch. Although there is colour. one discovery we've made, well, two discoveries actually. First was immediately noticeable when I jumped in the steering wheel. Oh, you're going to like this. This is the perfect combo. Oh, no, you're joking. Where is our Lemon Fire van gone? Ladies and gentlemen, Ford Mustang GT. In a very similar line. In a green, very similar colour. I'd love to know the colour. exact colour of that. But Tim will know. It's not grab a lime, is it? I don't. Can't be. I don't no, think I don't so. think it is. Tim will know. Yeah, Tim will know. Anyway, back to the point I was making. The steering one, the steering wheel on this is much thinner than it was on the other one, and I'm told there's a slightly different design that occurred. There was a crossover point where they got a little bit thinner. This is one of those. Yeah. And the other thing, this is missing something, which you went to go for as soon as we jumped in, because underneath the handbrake on the Lemon Fire one was a free pin UK plug socket. Yeah, so you can a, charge your laptop yeah. or whatever. So you were planning on plugging the drone that we have in so that we could do some drone footage of this. Yeah. That's going to have to wait for another day because obviously we were unable to charge it on the move. So I guess that's potentially an option. Um, yep, it must be. It must be an option. But other than that, it is... 
the same thing. We've still got yep. the back seats. So let's we do. do this. Six seater, three up front. And then when we open the rear, perfect. Literally all you could need. Loads and yep. loads of room. Now, as we said, there's something in the back of here that we should show the guys. Also, it's been a little while since we last did a maintenance check back at this museum, shall we say. And with tire, uh, with tire, with temperatures dropping a little bit lately, few of the cars that I've jumped into have been low on tire pressure. I'm sure you guys saw where that was coming after my stumble, but as with temperatures dropping, tire pressure is going low. So I think we need to go back and basically check the tire pressures on everything, get them set again now so that they're where they need to be when we next want to bring the cars out. Let's get in the van and go and do that. Let's go and do that. Hello, Brad. We're back. We're back, obviously. Yep. We've just set that up to go and clean while we're here. Again. Yep. Well, we didn't let it do the full thing. No. Obviously. We sent it back home, as you saw. Yeah. Went out and now we're back, so we're going to send it. You probably need to move. I probably do. But we have something down here, so conveniently, we can move. I'm in the, I'm in the Mercedes, on the Mercedes. You're in the Mercedes. You're definitely not in that. <laughs> okay, I'm on it. However, here we have what we kind of teased earlier on that we had in the back of the van. Oh, yeah. And weirdly enough, we're in the right sort of location. So I think this would probably want to go at the front of this. Here-ish. Yeah. And again, I've not opened this before, so this might be the right way, it might be the wrong way. I'm sure they've all guessed what it is by now. That's better. Yeah. That's you can better. Spin it. Yeah, you can yeah. spin it. So I'm gonna say I'm sure they've all guessed what it is by now anyway. <laughs> That's cool. So here we have the MSRT nice. leaderboard for the rally car. So I guess we will, nearly fell over, we will pick a circuit, a stage, a game, whatever it may be, and we will have dedicated lap times. And every single person who comes to visit this museum, guests, friends, people who are filming, will have to have a go and put their time on the board. I so think we pick a transit. Maybe we do pick a transit. Or we do something a bit more serious. Maybe, maybe some form of Ford product, because I think that's very, you know, I mean, it has Ford Maybe right we'll see if the... we can get like a Focus or something for a set of Corsa. Focus, Mustang, RS Mustang, something, yeah, something like, like that. that. Or maybe we do a rally stage. To be decided, if you guys have any ideas of what you'd like to see the leaderboard become, do drop the comments down below and let's see what we come up with. But um, I guess for now, me and you are going to make something up and probably spend way too much time in yeah. this tonight. Although I think we should go and do the tyre pressures first, then do this because we'll be stuck here for... We should. Hours. Okay, so let's go and do some tyre pressures. Uh, I'll take this half, you take that half, something like that. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right, so first one's up. We've got the tyre compressor out and I can't wait until we have like a compressor solution next door and we have an actual door and a hose on a reel that we can just run through and do this so easily or just take cars next clever, door. Actually. Yeah. If we can find a hose reel long enough where we can Ooh. literally bring it through the door. So I wonder it. if we can have a hose reel on this side of the door and just have that it goes through the hard, wall, connects like, to another one, and then we can just pull it off and go and... I, I would like to think there's a solution where somewhere up on the wall we can mount one of those and have it then uh, an airline, like hard airline. I feel as clever that. as it may be though, it becomes a problem when we want to do the Vantage Road, sorry, the SF90. Depends how long. Is. Depends how long. Yeah, but trailing that all the way. Anyway, we'll figure that one out. Uh, what I do need to do is remember where on earth the 12 volt socket is on this car. There it is in the center. So we will pop this one open. Time to pump these up a little bit. Yeah. These, this is one of the cars that the last time me and Tim have both jumped in it, they've been flashing low. Um, I think the center is another one, but actually as soon as you start driving those, they come up to temperature and okay, but we can top them up a little and just, yeah, I guess. Didn't we clean this recently as well? We did. Look at the state Tim's brought it back in. Yeah, but he then went filming. It did a good stuff couple hundred Bentley miles, wasn't it? or something. He, he yeah. went and filmed some bits and um, yeah, he ruined it. He ruined all of our hard work. In fact, he did actually say when he came in that day, he said, why have you bothered cleaning this car? You know I'm taking it out. And I said, I know I just wanted it looking clean. It was annoying me. It was the only one not clean. So <clears throat> anyway, we've checked the pressures on the door. So we are 30 PSI up front, 29 at the rear. I guess we need some ignition. <laughs> yeah. Bear with me. 
There we go. So that's showing about 24, 25 PSI. So definitely needs a little bit more in it. So I'm going to crack on with these, Brad. I'm going to go over there. Um, you have your own tire compressor. So luckily you can do those, those ones on that side and we'll join you guys in a moment. Let's go. Jump ahead a bit and we are done. We are done. All tire pressures are now where they should be ready for a winter's drive because obviously no garage queens in here. They all move. None of them sit for too long. I love the fact that's just whizzing away in the background. Yeah. Let's have a look at what happens when it gets near the Ford GT and Senna. True. This is going to be a bit of a moment of truth, isn't it? Please stop. We'll just turn away. Is it going to hit it? Oh, look at that. It's like, yep, can't go there. There's a McLaren Senna in front of me. I feel like it just does the spinny thing to make sure it cleans that yeah, whole area. Yeah, it must be just to check oh. that area. Okay, so we might need to adjust that box slightly. No, I think we're okay there. That's not bad. So that's just done a little spin, make sure it's clean the area, turn around, now goes back on its way towards the Fiesta. I guess doing, rally doing a new line, yeah. I guess next it will come up and, and head towards the Ford GT. We probably shouldn't be standing here where it's just clean. It's all this hard work it's done and we've just gone, yeah, we're going to walk here. Yeah, but it's... That's what it's for. It's going to happen, right? And that's why, that's the beauty of this. So once again, just want to say a huge thank you to Folgers Tool Store and obviously Nikita for making this happen. <laughs> it found the timber. <laughs> I have a funny feeling that we didn't put one in there maybe so it can go in that area. And yeah, we, we didn't put anything in there because we didn't expect to have all that timber sat. That will be where why it it's... The scooter probably needs to move as well because I feel like it might knock that over. But we'll get to that when it happens. I feel like I'd like to find out, but yeah. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching today and seeing obviously our Lemon Fire MSRT Transit depart, but the Traffic Blue one has arrived and the team adventures in a van continue. And if you're wondering where that is, it's outside because you're taking it straight away. Of course. Straight yeah. back into van man life. Straight back into van man life. Yeah, I was out the uh, Lemon Fire one this morning into the Traffic Blue one tonight. So obviously I need to test these things, right? It's, it's important consumer testing that I see. Is the blue one different to live with than the green one? True. yellow one. Oh, the other Whatever. thing the blue one has or doesn't have, it's got body colored wing mirrors. That's something I forgot to mention It does earlier. have body colored wing mirrors, whereas they were contrasting black on the other one. Anyway, we're waffling. We're going to go and jump on the sin. Sin? Sim. Sim. <laughs> it's been a long day. Until next time.